a new dawn for Greece. This week's EU IMF deal for Athens has been hailed by many as a major step forward. But will it hold? And what are the implications not just for Greece, but other Eurozone countries? Tony Stringer, Managing Director at Fitch Ratings, joins me now. Tony, without the OSI, um, official sector um, involvement, and given the positions of the EU and IMF, this deal was probably the best we could have hoped for, right? But um, what makes it more durable than the others that have failed in the past? Well, I think, I think it's positive. It's positive they got a deal done after asking uh, the Greek Parliament to go through and execute on fiscal consolidation. Uh, Eurozone partners really had to deliver something, uh, which they've done. Uh, whether it will be more durable, uh, time will tell. Um, what, what's the, hun the hunch at, at Fitch on that one? Well, I mean, I, th I think clearly a lot of things have to go right for Greece. You know, they, they have to get the, the debt buyback done, which is part of this, this deal that they've, uh, they've just agreed. Uh, they have to secure primary surpluses by 2016, I believe it is. They also have to achieve consistent growth. All those things, if any of those things goes wrong, uh, the debt dynamics kind of uh, deteriorate and it becomes much more difficult for them to get back to a sort of path towards solvency. Do you think they will meet these targets on, on, on those three counts? Um, I, th I think it's very difficult to say at this stage, to be honest. Um, you know, we've got a very low rating on Greece. We've got a triple C rating, uh, which indicates, uh, you know, a possibility of, of a future default. Um, so clearly, you know, things are precarious for Greece. Um, that there are indications from, I believe, the communique that there may be some further accommodation down the line uh, from, from Euro European partners in terms of more um, uh, flexibility on the package uh, and we'll have to wait and see if that, if that transpires. Forecasting Greek GDP um, at the best of times is um, you know, it's an imprecise art, shall we say, mm -hmm. or science. Um, it's basically finger in the wind, especially so many years in advance. Is this 124% uh, debt to GDP ratio by 2020? I mean, how accurate is that? Well, the, the further you go out with any forecast, the more problematic it becomes or the more difficult it becomes to um, rely on. Um, obviously, all you can do is, is take a forecasting model and plug in certain assumptions about growth uh, and about their ability to pay down debt. Clearly, one of the things that this, um, uh, this deal recently announced has, has brought them is, is lower interest costs, so that will, that will help in terms of their servicing ability. They've lowered the, uh, you know, the, the interest cost by 100 basis points on all the bilateral loans. Uh, but obviously there are other components of it that need to come together as well. As I mentioned, the, the debt buyback, there's some uh, murkiness about exactly how that's going to be achieved and how they're going to finance it, for example. I'll get to the debt buyback in a second, but just, we, you talked about the flexibility of the package going forward. I, mean, I presume you we're talking about OSI and uh, official sector write-downs. Mm -hmm. Can you quantify in any way how much the official sector would have to write off and debt to be cancelled to get Greece back on a sustainable debt path? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to be precise on uh, the exact amount of debt that would need to be written down, but clearly, you know, the balance of uh, the debt outstanding now for Greece is very much in, in, the, in the hands of the official sector. You know, there's only about 60 billion or so uh, left in the private sector. Uh, official sector has a, a much more significant portion of the over sort of 300 billion plus uh, debt load that Greece, that Greece carries. So clearly the only way for them to make a material difference to Greece's debt sustainability in the future would be to target the official sector. Um, obviously, there are rumours about uh, the timing of that and, and when it might be politically acceptable to uh, Greece's partners. Um, so, you know, we're not expecting that to happen anytime soon, but it's clearly something that uh, is perhaps on the table for a negotiation further down the line. Would it, would, I mean, for example, would it be closer to 100 billion or to 200 billion? Um, it's, it's difficult to do the c calculation in my head on the spot. I would say, uh, you know, 100 billion would be a, a material um, reduction in, in the debt load. You know, it would be nearly a third of the outstanding debt or getting on for that, that sort of sum. Um, so I, I, would, I would imagine that that would get you somewhere closer to a, a, you know, a clearly sustainable debt path. OK, and finally, um, does the implication of this deal uh, spread to other countries like Spain? For example, they might have to contribute to the debt buyback, um, would that put any extra burden on their finances? Uh, well, it, I mean, it already will in, in a certain sense, in that the um, you know the, the, the bilateral loans are come, the, the cost of the bilateral loans are coming down by 100 basis points. So uh, those countries that have, have contributed to those loans uh, obviously will be um, worse off in a, in a relative terms in terms of funding uh, the loans to Greece. 
Um, I think on a more positive spin, if you like, is that um, uh, obviously th th this deal has in indicated that policymakers are very keen to try and make sure that they keep Greece within the Eurozone. They've spent a long time negotiating this. Um, that, that can only be positive for other troubled Eurozone sovereigns because the indications are, you know, everyone wants to avoid a breakup. OK, Tony, thank you very much. That was Tony Stringer from Fitch Ratings. On to our chart of the day. 10-year Italian bond yields are falling to their lowest level today since June last year, as the risk of an immediate Greek default recedes. It's currently down around six basis points on a day at 4.67%. At the start of this year, it was over 7%. That's all for now, but do join us at this time every day to take the pulse of the market. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters. <laughs>